Hey everybody, welcome to Journey at Home. Thanks so much for joining us. So we are doing a special series in person at Journey right now that we can't bring you online. We'd love for you to join us at the Four Center on Sundays at 9 and 1030 to experience it if you live here in this area. But don't worry, for all of you online, we're bringing you some of the best of messages that we've delivered online and we hope that you enjoy it. So jump right in, settle in, and let's get started. I should probably start this series by admitting that what we're gonna be talking about for the next few episodes is a bit emotional for me. And by that, I mean, I get pretty passionate about this because obviously I care about the local church and I've chosen to invest my life in it and to invest my life in you. But I'm really frustrated by the fact that churches have such a negative reputation with most people, especially people who aren't in church. We have a major brand problem and in a lot of cases, people have just become apathetic to the church entirely now, and it is not the fault of the people who feel that way. The fault lies entirely, I believe, with the church. Christianity, as I said, it's got a real branding problem. People just don't think positively about us anymore. So if you are one of those people, and you're skeptical or cynical or resistant to the idea of church, you're watching this with that finger hovering over the pause button, you know, I get it. I just want you to know I don't blame you for that. You've got some good reasons why you view the church the way that you do. Some of you were burned by Christians in the past. You were hurt by the church. Some of you tried to share your doubts and ask your questions. You got shut down by the church. Some of you tried to get involved in a church, but you realized pretty quickly, while the people there were friendly, well, they weren't going to let you belong, at least not until you believed and behaved just like they did. Some of you tried to get into a church and understand all the things that were being taught, but the sermons made no sense, and they used a lot of religious terminology you'd never heard before, and you just couldn't get anything out of it, so you decided, this must not be for me. Some of you probably just couldn't stand that all the church ever talked about was who they were against and what they were against. Kind of feels like at times the only way to be a good church or a good Christian is to make sure everyone knows that you're against all these groups of people and all these types of things. I mean, the message, maybe for you, seemed to be really clear. If you're not on our side, then you're on the wrong side of God. But if you're somebody who just doesn't like that kind of church or that kind of religion, I've got some great news for you. You are in better company than you know. There is someone on your side, and that someone might just surprise you. So for the next few episodes of this series, Overhaul, my goal is to show you what Jesus said that we, as his followers, should be known for and what the church, this movement that he started, should be about. Because Jesus actually taught, if you'll lose your religion, you'll improve your life. So I've been praying that for many of us who are Christians and those of you who aren't yet, that this really is going to be a series that overhauls the way you think about Jesus and faith. That those of us who are Christians will see where we've gone wrong where we've gotten it mixed up, where we've been hypocritical. And that those of you who aren't Christians yet will realize that what you're resisting about Christianity or the church, well, it actually isn't what Jesus gave his life to create. So here's what I want you to understand. The church has not become judgmental and irrelevant and resistible because we follow Jesus. People who were nothing like Jesus liked Jesus and he liked them. I mean, the most unholy, irreligious people on the planet wanted to be around Jesus when he was here. They followed him wherever he went. They showed up wherever he was teaching. They listened to him all day long. These people hung out with Jesus so often that it actually became a main criticism that the religious leaders in the first century used against Jesus. They would say things like, well, this man Jesus welcomes sinners and he eats with them. Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? They would criticize him for the people he hung with. So what happened? Well, over the years, Christians have lost what Jesus modeled, and instead we've held to a model that Jesus came to end. It's what I call the religion model. You pick any religion you want, and you're going to find it's built around these four components. They're sacred places, sacred text, sacred men, and sincere followers. Let me explain. Every religion has a place, or maybe a handful of places, that they consider sacred. 
So if you really want to connect with God, you've got to go to one of those sacred places. Now, Christianity has its own version of this. Christians talk about going to the house of the Lord because in their mind, the church building, well, that's more sacred than any other building. And then in religion, when you go to those sacred places, what happens? Well, you study and you learn about the sacred text. We bring our sacred text to sacred places where sacred men, and it's almost always men, isn't it? Sacred men are there to explain to us what they mean. And these men have extraordinary power because, well, according to their religion, they're the only ones with the special ability to interpret those sacred texts for you. So they get to tell all their sincere followers or sometimes scared or superstitious followers what they've got to do to gain access to God. Sound familiar? You just pick any religion you want throughout history. This is how it works. And maybe this is the version of Christianity that's been presented to you. But I'm telling you, it's not how Jesus said it would work. It's not what he intended for it to be. If you've ever been to a church that looks like that, that church got it wrong. And if you're a Christian and you think, well, that's how it ought to work, well, you've got it wrong. Jesus came to end the religion model and introduce something brand new that changes everything. See, when Jesus showed up, he taught there were no more sacred places. There were only sacred people. Matter of fact, he taught that when you're at one of these sacred places, the person to your left and right, well, it's, they're far more sacred than the ground you're standing on. He taught that there aren't any sacred men who control your access to God. Nope, everybody has equal access to their Heavenly Father. And Jesus said that this sacred text, well, it's for you. And that God's Spirit would be in you to help you understand the Scriptures and how to apply them to your life. So when Jesus was on the earth, do you know who he said was on the wrong side of God? You got any idea who his harshest criticism was reserved for? It was not the sinners. It was not the sincere or the scared followers. Nope. It was for the sacred men who had chosen to protect the religion model at the expense of people being able to experience a relationship with God. I'll share one example with you. So one day Jesus heals this man. He did this from time to time. And because the religious leaders felt threatened by the growing popularity of Jesus, well, they accused him of being in partnership with Satan. That sounds a bit extreme, doesn't it? But these were sacred men who controlled the Jewish sacred place, the temple in Jerusalem. And they got to tell the people what the sacred text said and what they had to do to follow it. So they had a lot of power, which they had used to gain you can guess it, a lot of money. And Jesus, when he showed up, he was a threat to all that because he had come to end that model. He was there to change everything that was actually propping up their power. So right after this exchange that he has with them, Jesus goes into the home of one of these religious leaders to have dinner. And this religious leader, Noah, says Jesus didn't wash his hands before he ate. Now, what these religious leaders had done is they had taken what's good hygiene practice, wash your hands, and they had made it one of their 600 religious rules that determined whether you got access to God. So it's possible Jesus didn't wash his hands that day just to make the point that, hey, this is absurd. You know, this has nothing to do with your relationship with God. And then he looks at these religious leaders as they begin to confront him about what he had done, and he says this, he says, all right, now then, you Pharisees, you clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you're full of greed and wickedness. Let me ask you, have you ever met someone who was all religious on the outside, but the closer you got to them, the less impressed you were? I mean, the closer you got to them, the better you knew them, you discovered they're so arrogant, judgmental, selfish, greedy, gossipy, you know? Well, this is what Jesus is describing. He's going, oh, okay, your religion model's got you looking all good on Sunday, but inside you're a mess. During the week, you're full of greed and wickedness. You don't have any character. You're just rotten to the core. And then he goes on and he says, You foolish people, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? But now, as for what's inside you, be generous to the poor and everything will be clean for you. To which I'm sure they must have thought, Oh, okay, so this is how we get on the right side of God. We just need to give some money. That's the shortcut, you know, that's the secret. Okay, I'll give a little then it'll all be good. To which Jesus says, no, no, no. You still don't get it. He goes on. He says, woe to you Pharisees because you give God a tenth of your mint and your rue and all the other kinds of garden herbs, but you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. In other words, Jesus goes, I'm not saying a person who follows me shouldn't be generous. Of course they should because 
I'm generous. But don't be fooled for a second into believing you can drop a few dollars in a bucket at church on Sunday and then treat people any way you want to and neglect doing what's right and think, oh, I'm going to be all right with God. It doesn't work that way. Because Jesus didn't come to clean up the outside of you. He came to clean up the inside. He came to clean up all of you. Jesus goes on. He's he's talking to these religious leaders. He says, woe to you Pharisees, because you love the most important seats in the synagogues and respectful greetings in the marketplaces. Oh, guys, you, you just love for people to see you. You love to be treated like you're important. You love feeling like you're better than everyone else. You love feeling like you're part of the club. But that pride, that arrogance, oh, man, it puts you on the wrong side of God. He continues. He's not done. The next thing he said to him was this, Woe to you because you are like unmarked graves, which people walk over without knowing it. In other words, you're trying to look all godly and righteous to people, but inside you're dead, inside you're corrupt, inside you're broken. You're just on the wrong side of God. See, when you read the first century documents detailing the life and the teachings of Jesus, it becomes crystal clear. Jesus had no tolerance for any expression of religion that made it difficult for people to connect with God. Jesus came to end the religion model and introduce something brand new that changes everything. So, if you have been resisting God because you resisted religion and you assumed that they were one and the same, I've got some great news for you. Jesus resists the same religion you do. He introduced something brand new. And I hope you'll lean in for the next few episodes to discover what it is. And if you consider yourself a Christian, I hope you'll pause to consider whether you're really following Jesus or if you have allowed the religion model to creep into your life and to corrupt what Jesus came to do in you. Is there some hypocrisy in you? And is that hypocrisy making it difficult for people to connect with God? Listen, selfish Christians always make it more difficult for people to turn to God. And unfortunately, there are way too many Christians living for their me-first kingdom, which is why most churches have the negative reputations they do because they're primarily focused on themselves. And while the temptation and the possibility is there for us to be that kind of church, for us to be those kinds of people, I can promise you this, as long as I have the privilege to serve you and to serve alongside you, we're just going to fight that because every person in our communities deserves to see what it looks like for a group of Christians to be better on the inside than the outside. That the closer they get to us, the more they ought to like us. They deserve to see what it looks like for a church to really be an other's first group of people. And they deserve the opportunity to engage with a church that makes it easy for them to connect with God. That's why I don't hesitate to ask you to invest your time in a local church. Because we don't want to be hypocrites who look good on the outside, but inside we're just really all about ourselves. The church, it's not a cruise ship designed for our comfort. We're a rescue ship designed to point people, to connect people to Jesus. It is our responsibility to overhaul the way people view church and the way the church views people. So for the next few episodes, I'm going to describe as clearly as I can this brand new thing that Jesus came to introduce to the world. And it's going to be challenging for all of us to embrace it, to follow it, and to serve so others can experience it. But let me remind you, we follow a leader who did not come to be served and to do the easy thing. No, he came to serve and to give his life away for us. He ended the religion model and he introduced something brand new that changes everything. I'm telling you, it's worth giving your life to. You lose your religion, you will improve your life. How? Well, I'll show you starting next week in episode two of Overhaul.